Jeff Dio was born into a music family. He remembers singing hymns as a kid and performing Christian songs that he wrote in high school. But it wasn't until he was a professional musician that he really developed a heart for worship. Take a look. Jeff Dio was the lead singer of a Christian band called Zilch. At the end of each night, they played worship songs to close out their set. When people started responding, Jeff realized God was up to something. In 1999, Zilch found themselves in the middle of a massive move of pure worship and changed their name to Sonic Flood. In his book, Awakening Pure Worship, Jeff shows how we can experience the presence of God in every area of our lives and why worship is so much more than just singing songs. Well, Jeff Dio is here with us now, and we welcome you to the program today. It's great to have you here. Thank you, Terry. So good to be here. And Jeff, how, how would you define worship? What does that mean? Well, to me, it's just our response to the incredible revelation that God is, that God loves us. Yes. You know, it's the way that we respond to Him. So certainly it could be something that would happen through music, but it's so much more than that. It's the way that we live our lives. It's the way we love our kids, those sure. types of things. Too. Well, you say that God is not in the, the presence of God isn't in the music. So where does the presence of God come in? So good, because so, so many times we get this idea that as soon as the music starts playing, uh, there's where God's presence is. Now, of course, we can experience the presence of God in the music, sure. and we should, but then we also need to learn that when the presence of God is, when the music is not there, it doesn't mean the presence of God is not God. there. So of course the presence of God is really found in relationship with Him, yeah. when we engage with Him. If you and I were sitting in the same room, but I was reading a book and you were doing something else, we could be in our physical presence, but not yes. relationally engaged. So we wanna be engaged with God. You know, when that happens, it's a moment, yes. you know, for, for all of us, it's a moment. It means taking time, really to acknowledge the presence of, you can't have that happen without the connection of His presence in our spirit. Yes. How do we get there? Yeah, well, I think really availing ourselves to Him. Mm -hmm. So many times we will want to beg Him to come into our presence, when really the scriptures, especially in the New Testament, invite us to come boldly yeah. into His presence. So sometimes the question isn't so much, is he going to show up, but will we show up? You know, we've got yes. to show up and engage. He's ready and he's waiting. If we will engage with him, he will engage with us. You know, I think also when we talk about, for example, the, the, the establishment by God of, of our Sunday, a day of worship, that it's not for him, it's for us. And the same is true of worship, isn't it? Yes, it is. It's so many times. It's God. <laughs> right, right. I mean, you know, and some people might get offended when you say something like that, because I would say worship is not for God. Now, it's about God. Yes. And it's to God. But the, the blessing of worship is for us. And the way that we, we talk about that, we just say something like, well, who benefits most when we worship God? God or us? Who's changed most when we worship? God or us? Of course, we are changed. Is there a right or a wrong way to worship? <laughs> That's such a great question. You know, to me, the best way to worship is the way the Bible lays it out. Yeah. There are not too many things in the Bible where God just says, hey, however you feel, just do it the way you want to. <laughs> he always gives us direction yes. and his directions are good. So if he calls us to lift our hands or to sing, even if it's not the way we were raised, because mm. it wasn't the way I was raised. You know, I grew up in a church. Yeah, if somebody raised their hands, we kind of thought they had a question. Yeah. You know? <laughs> <laughs> but, but then I read the Bible and it says, hey, lift up your hands, yes. lift up your yeah. voice. And so I'm like, hey, I want to be the man of God who lives by the word and worships the way God instructs me to. He really calls us to a place of surrendering our, our selfish ego, how we're being perceived by other people to come into a place of totally giving ourselves to him. Don't you think that's why the lifting of hands, it, it does something in it us really when we does. do that, doesn't it? It really does. I mean, it's amazing this beautiful cycle that happens when you see the revelation in God's word of the way that we should worship, whether it be lifting our hands or getting on our knees. Yes. Then when you actually obey in faith, you may not even understand how, how could lifting my hands really yeah. change anything. But something happens when you lift yeah. up your hands, you lift up your heart, when you allow your, your body to come into agreement with your heart. Because some people would say, well, I just worship God in my heart. And that's a great start. We know that the Bible says, love the Lord with yeah. your God with all your heart, your soul, your mind, and your yeah. strength. So whole self. You know, I, I feel sometimes like as a grown up, we, when we are adults, we are just kind of holding in so much. And there's something about lifting your hands up that makes you like, feel like a child of God coming to Abba Daddy yes. and just 
honestly receiving from him. And, it, and when you're in the midst of turmoil, when you're in the midst of angst or loss or fear or any of that, it, it just changes yeah. the moment. I mean, even if, even if that's something you can't do publicly, it's worthy of, <laughs> of doing privately, Absolutely. right? And that's one of the things that God calls us to. I mean, it's one of the things I talk about in the book is yes. if you want to be an awakened, pure worshiper, one of the things that God calls us to is become like a child. Yes. Of course, we know there's a difference between being childish and childlike, yes. right? Absolutely. So he calls us, and, and you see children when they're dancing or lifting their hands. Freedom. Or just <laughs> playing with people yes. they don't even know. I'll yes. ask my kids, my young kids, oh, who is your new friend? They don't even know their <laughs> name. They just want to play with somebody. Yes. So they're so free, and yes. that God is calling us to be free like little children. Uninhibited. Tell us about the song you're going to sing for us yeah. today. So this song is called Come Away With Me, and it's a brand new song, so it's not even out there yet. This is the, be this is the first time, the debut. Uh, but it's really just a heart, the heart from the book, because yeah. it's written out of uh, Song of Solomon, uh, chapter 2. Yeah. And I have never written a song out of Song of Solomon, but this song is a song that's going to be recorded uh, by our North Central University students where awesome. I teach. So we will be recording it, uh, but this is the first time that we'll be able to hear it. Well, how, how exciting that you're going to do it here. Jeff, thank you for sharing. I'm going to talk about your book while you right. move over and get ready to sing for us today. And for more insights on worship, be sure to get his book. It's called Awakening Pure Worship, Cultivating a Closer Friendship with God. Who doesn't want that? You can get a copy wherever books are sold.